Kame will kick off for the Mox. And Javier Arenas and Julio Jones are deep for the Crimson Tide. A short kick. Julio fields it at the 25. Works his way up outside the 35-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. 10 on the return. Another 10-win season. That's 30 for the Crimson Tide. Only Oklahoma has more with 31. D.J. Fitzgerald, one of those seniors, on the field before the game with his punt. It turns down near the goal line. And it goes into the end zone. So Chattanooga will start from the 20-yard line. That's what he does. The quick toss to the outside. John Galt on the receiving end goes for five yards. Pulling on third down. And a first down for Chattanooga. Completed on the outside to Chris Pritchford. That goes for nine yards. Four wide on the right side. Coleman with lots of time. Short completion to Pitchford. Let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by Hampton Inn. He's making his 38th consecutive start today at the defensive end. Mike Hammonds will kick it away for Chattanooga. He's averaged just under 40 yards a punt this season. A high spiraling kick that takes an Alabama bounce and it's down at the 49-yard line, just a 32-yard punt. Somewhat of a surprise, that game in Little Rock, by the way, the other home for the Hogs of Arkansas. And Ingram now busts to the outside, his second carry of the day, finding a lot of room on the outside. Third down and just a yard for a first down. Ingram spins forward for the first down, so hard to bring down in that initial hit. Mike McCoy is wide to the right for the Crimson Tide. Marquise Mays is wide left, and Julio Jones in the slot. Lower part of your screen. McElroy looking at Julio all the way. Now decides to run it. Takes a pretty good shot. Picks up six yards on the scramble. And that Wildcat look again. There's the fake right up the gut. And here's Ingram gets the first down. Second and seven. First carry for Trent Richardson. Richardson built in the same mold of Ingram. McElroy with a quick pitch out to Trent Richardson. He gets down inside the five-yard line. Close to the three-yard line. Two tight ends and the fullback in there in front of Richardson. He's going behind those big blockers, and he works his way in for the touchdown. Last week he had a big game against the Citadel, seven catches, and already today getting involved in the offense as well. Mike Hammonds boots this one much better than the first one, and Javi Arenas fields it at the 29 and then goes down almost immediately. That's a 42-yard boot. Dial in motion. McElroy goes deep to Julio Jones, who leaps and pulls it down. Again, two tight ends. Ingram going behind the left side of that offensive line. Breaks a tackle, and he's still rumbling into the end zone. 25 yards. That's strong. Pitchford in motion to reverse the double reverse. And again, Galt throws the pick to Corey Reamer. McElroy again gives off to Mark Ingram. And he just carries the pile running over that left side. Again, Mike Johnson is such an outstanding offensive lineman, the left guard. For 300 pounders, they move very well. Here's the fake. Lots of time for McElroy into the end zone. Touchdown, Julio Jones. Nineteen yards, way too easy.
Mike Hammonds will punt it away for Chattanooga with that unusual alignment. They have three players at the top of the screen. Gets it away without a lot of pressure as they set up the return for Arenas, who fields it at the 34. Bus free. This is what the crowd came to see. Here goes the senior. Scampering into the end zone. Touchdown, Javi Arenas. 7 Punt returns for touchdowns, a Southeastern Conference record for the one and only Javier Arenas. Screen again, fields it just shy of the five yard line, brings it out and almost gets his head taken off. From the 26, the Mocs have one first down so far today. Russian four, hanging on to that one is Blue Cooper. Looking for only their second first down of the first half, third and two. That ball goes out of bounds and incomplete. Personal foul, run the passer, number 57, defense, hit the quarterback in the head. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. They said, no, we actually want to keep challenging these guys to get better each week. We'll have our whole arsenal in this week. And the draw play, first time we've seen that today. Another third down for the Mox. Again, pressure. And B.J. Coleman hangs in there, finds Pitchford. That goes for seven yards and another first down. Feeling a little bit better about his situation. Fourth and ten, the Mox. Way down, decide to go for it, and it goes incomplete, so they'll turn it over on downs. Then Richardson in there and takes the handoff going over the right side. Great seal blocking by the tight end, Colin Peak. Is going to be the guy, according to McElwain, in the future. Back to Richardson, right up the gut. Yeah, as a receiver, you don't necessarily like that ryegrass. He's very slippery, trying to get in and out of breaks. And we saw some guys falling down yesterday for Chattanooga in their walkthrough. And Richardson moves forward. 1B in all of his classes here at Alabama. And he laughs. He said that was a B-plus in a leadership class, of all things. Ingram running around wide open, middle of the field, looking for a block. And he moves in for another touchdown of 40 yards. <laughs> Tiffin kicks, kicks deep. Joel Bradford, his first return of the afternoon. Bradford finds a gap. And he got nailed. It appeared his mouthpiece came flying out, and a flag is down on the play. Dirty return, holding number 18, kicking team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. You have to at least try to get out there and chip him somehow, or your quarterback is going to get destroyed. There's the punt from Mike Hammonds. Javi Arenas calls for the fair catch at the 15-yard line, a 41-yard boot. Again, this place will seat over 100,000 for the season opener in 2010. First foul, snapper, number 36, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First you didn't know down. you weren't allowed to rush this, or, uh, rough the snapper there, did, were you, Doug? Coleman back in there, quarterback Dyer. And running back gets his first carry. Third and less than a yard. Mount Cody, they run right at him, and the big man stands up. Kerma, but the force goes forward, and it's a first down for Chattanooga. Mox will forego the field goal to try to get to the scoreboard to go for it on fourth down, rushing four. And that gets intercepted, Javier Arenas. Already run a putt back, 66 yards for a touchdown, and now an interception, his second of the season for the senior. And Chris, I know you remember your last game. Yeah, very emotional. We played Florida State at home the last game that I played in, and, and certainly you want to go out having a good effort, but you can't believe how quickly the time flies by. It seems like, you, you know, just yesterday, you probably, guys probably feel like they were just coming in as true freshmen. Pretty impressive. Nick Saban emphasizes not only the, the desire for his players to be great 
players on the field, but be great students in the classroom and their commitment to getting that education and that degree is one of the main focuses that he has. Until you don't have an experienced kicker, you don't realize how important of a job that is. A high punt, he was trying to pooch inside the 20 yard line and that one didn't go the way he was planning. It goes out of bounds at the 22, only a 23 yard punt. J.J. Jackson in there, tailback. With a mox and he carries it right into the teeth of that Alabama defense. Gets thrown for a two yard loss. You can definitely tell the focus of this Chattanooga offense has changed early in the game. We saw them run and throwing the football just about every down. I think at this point in time, they just want to try to shorten the ball game a little bit, run the clock as much as they can, and they pretty much settled on handing the ball off and allowing the uh, Alabama defense to, to stop them. Not a whole lot of fight that they're putting up at this point in the ball game. And time ticks down at the end of the first half. Russ Huseman and company find themselves in the 35-0 hole. Now let's go to the Cellular South halftime report. Here's Rob Stoll and Big Matt Stinchcomb in the SEC Network studio, guys. Again, B.J. Coleman is the transfer from the University of Tennessee. And because he transferred to a 1AA school, there's an interception. A pick by Justin Woodall, his third interception of the season. Ben Richardson. Again, doing his Mark Ingram impersonation, breaking tackles. Star Jackson from the shotgun up Church's wide left. Earl Alexander at the bottom of your screen. Jackson avoided the first sack and then goes down for a loss. This will be a 41-yard attempt. He has had a big season. Alabama's all-time scoring leader. If he makes this, he'll be tied with Phillip Doyle. And he is. That's good. He's now tied with Phillip Doyle for the most field goals, 78 in a career at Alabama. Another one of those seniors playing in his last home game. Alabama on top, 38-0. While it might be good to a, a lot of the Chattanooga fans, it's not going to be good for them next year. He doesn't want to hear any more about the moral victories and about the turnaround. They expect to win championships in the future, and he's going to demand a lot more out of those guys next year. Holding, number 12, offense. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Still first down. Julio Jones is lined up in midfield, awaiting the punt from Mike Hammonds. Julio calls for the fair catch. Only a 32-yard punt. I think we'll avoid it during the game as Star Jackson hands off to Upchurch. Six yards now for Upchurch. Bradford on the stop for the Mox. I think there's some bright things for this Mississippi State program going forward. Star Jackson now kept his footing on that slick turf. And it's going to be a first down for the Crimson Tide. Jackson looking and now scrambling. And he gets knocked out of bounds. Here comes the redshirt freshman. Keeps it himself. Flag comes flying in. That's usually in the area of a holding penalty. Holding number 74, offense. Penalties declined. First down, Chattanooga. Played at Ole Miss and now with the Baltimore Ravens. DJ Coleman. At play was whistled dead. Before the snap, false start, number 70, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Really hasn't taken advantage of the opportunities, and that's one of the things that, that we talked about earlier was they're going to have to catch some footballs if they're going to make this game at all competitive. Julio Jones goes backwards, calls for that fair catch right at the 25-yard line. They got a chance to be pretty good if he does return next season. Second down, Star Jackson on the quarterback draw. Again, for Jackson, that's what he brings to the table, that quickness factor. A little more maneuverability than Greg McElroy. 
That was the last national title for the Crimson Tide. 12 titles. Can they get 13 this season? That's what this fan base is hoping as Trent, excuse me, that's Roy Upchurch goes forward to get tripped up by Tippett. You play the entire season and it comes down to the next couple of weeks and playing against Auburn in that Iron Bowl. That'd be a, that'd be probably a, a pretty pretty good dream come true for a lot of Auburn fans if they were able to knock this Alabama team out of the ranks of the unbeaten. And that Georgia Dome just exemplifies all the excitement of a big game. The noise and everybody's so close to the playing field and that's Demetrius Good. You got the SEC fanfare. It's just a tremendous event that the conference puts on and I was so happy to have a chance to be a part of four SEC championship games, three of them against Alabama. And that, that's really the way in my mind it's supposed to be. Alabama against Florida, two heavyweights taking each other on. It's just a, it's a great atmosphere when those two teams meet off. Star Jackson with the play fake. Rifles it out to Mike McCoy. Up Church gets another first down. This is one of the louder places that you get a chance to go to in the in the country. And I, I didn't ever get to play Alabama here, but I certainly would have loved to have that opportunity. Up Church, 12th play of the drive. And he really wants to get him back to a bowl game. It's been a long time. Up Church continues to carry the load. Now he picks up eight yards. That ball actually busted free. Baron Huber jumped on it for Alabama. Let's check the flag. After the play, personal foul, number 40, offense. 15-yard penalty. The play resulted in a first down. It'll be first and 10. Constantly driving the, those around him to be better, and, and he has an awful good chance if he continues to progress in Coach Huseman's mind of, of being an NFL quarterback. Up church. Put his head down and driving forward. New set of downs now for Star Jackson. And Roy Upchurch. He gets thrown backwards by Joseph Thornton. That's a six yard loss. Thornton, a four year starter for the Mox. And when your quarterback gives you an opportunity, go get the ball in the end zone. You got to make him, got to reward him. So we'll come back to you again in the future. Illegal substitution, 12 players in the formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And that ball was partially blocked. So Alabama has stopped. That was not Lee Tiffin. But we asked Kirby, and we'll talk about that. Let's watch the punt first. And a fair catch called for by Julio, and he bobbles it, but stays on it. Second down for Star Jackson. Back to Upchurch. Let's take a look now at the upcoming schedule. Mutual respect and admiration amongst these two teams and coaches and fan bases. But those are two large football games with a lot of implications riding on each of them. Prefers the college ranks over the over the NFL the time that they're able to spend at home here with his family. But two very intense guys that really love coaching defense and committed to their craft and teaching these young men. Be nice to see Alabama's offense score some points here in the second half. Really haven't done a whole lot. And Coach Saban wants to see some production out of guys like Star Jackson and Upchurch as well. Back to Good. Broke a tackle, did a nice job, gets a first down. Those were some of the best years of my life. You know, I enjoyed playing in the NFL, but the college game, the passion of the SEC, getting to play with guys for four or five years and those bonds that you make, that, it's something special you can't really duplicate in any other walk of life. 19 years old Mark Ingram could be headed for a Heisman Trophy. First ever in the history of this program. And it's a touchdown for Roy Upchurch, 21 yards. Very impressed 
sitting down with him and his presence in, in the office yesterday. You can definitely tell why his guys play as hard as they do for him. Kareem Jackson calls for that fair catch, backtracks to the 12-yard line. That's a pretty good kick. Thomas Dara in at quarterback now. Handed off to Good in that last one. It looks like same combination again. And Good showing some quickness. Back to the ground game and Good. That will stop the clock with 25 seconds as he picks up seven. And Auburn off last week, so they get a chance to prepare for this Crimson Tide team for an entire two weeks. We'll see if Alabama can turn things around quickly and get ready for Friday's game. And that should do it. As Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide wind up their home schedule with a 45-0 win. Mount Cody and company, 26 seniors in all, play their last home game. It's 45-0. Russ Huseman shake hands with Saban. And now the fun begins for this Alabama team. We'll be right back with more from Alabama after this from the Southeastern Conference.